Hello, this is Jordan, and this video is being recorded for the morning of Saturday, February 19th, 2022. Thank you so much for joining me. Hope you had a great week, and hope you enjoy the weekend. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe because I'm going to have a lot more content coming this year. And in this video, I am going to talk about the three leading indicators that I watch that uh, more so than predicting a gold breakout, these three leading indicators will show us the sustainability of the move in gold and also gold stocks. Because two of them deal with gold and the other deals with gold stocks. And in this chart, I have uh, two of the leading indicators. So this is a weekly candle chart. We have gold at the top. In the middle, we have gold against foreign currencies. And at the bottom, we have gold against the stock market, gold against the S&P 500. And so the two, two of the three leading indicators you can see here, gold against foreign currencies, gold against the stock market. Now, the reason gold against foreign currencies is important, and another way to look at this is just gold multiplied by the dollar index. So we're evaluating gold without the impact of a falling dollar. And the reason this is so important is and I've talked about this in videos over the years, over the last 25, 30 years or so, even you can go back and look at the 90s, uh, gold against foreign currencies recently has been a strong leading indicator for the gold price. And so, in other words, we typically see, you know, throughout the last 20 years, it's been an excellent period for gold for the most part. Gold against foreign currencies, it usually moves first. It usually shows strength, and it usually makes a new higher high or a new all-time high first. And one example of that is you can see there right in the middle of the chart, the new all-time high right at the blue arrow. That was a new all-time high in gold against foreign currencies, and that occurred roughly a year before the gold price in dollars. And so here and now, gold against foreign currencies – it's roughly within 4% of the all-time high. So if we're looking at that chart and we're just kind of making an equivalence to gold and U.S. dollars, I mean, it's it's above the uh, 1950 area, so close to 2,000. So it, it's almost as if uh, gold is uh, very close to 2,000. So that's gold against foreign currencies. It's... Again, it's within 4% of the all-time high, and it's broken out to a new 52-week high. However, it's really meaningful when it makes a new all-time high, because if it doesn't make a new all-time high, uh, that's not that powerful of a leading indicator. It, it's really, uh, looking at it now, it's really when it makes a new all-time high, you know, and it could lead gold by... I mean, I don't know. It could be as long as a year or it could be as short as a couple months. You know, maybe it'll be somewhere in between. I'll have to go back and you know look at all the times it's happened. But for the sake of this video, I'm just pointing out it's an important leading indicator. And it's acting well and it's leading. And so again, when that makes a new all-time high, then it's, it's on point for gold. And of course, gold against the stock market. I've also talked about this over the years. And gold hasn't been in a real bull market. I mean, it's it's had a couple of moves in 2016 or you know, 2018 to 2020, but when gold is in a real bull market, it's outperforming the stock market for an extended period of time. I mean, we saw that in the 2000s, we saw that in the 1970s, and we will see that coming up. And you know what we've seen over the last two months, two and a half months or so, perhaps that's it, that's a turning point. You know, we see the stock market weakening and we see gold gaining traction. It has risen above the moving average there, which is the equivalent to the 200 day. So that is acting really well. And if you look at the move in 2016, but more so 2018 to 2020, it was gold holding, not only getting above the moving average, but then it's holding above it for an extended period of time. Now we saw that again, from 2018 to 2020, I mean, it dipped below it in 2019 there a couple times, but not for long. So those are two things that are going to tell us the sustainability of the strength in gold. 
Number one, look for gold against foreign currencies and make a new all-time high. And then number two, look for gold against the S&P 500 to hold above its 200-day moving average. You know, we get those things. And look, gold, you know, gold might be above 1900 when those things get confirmed. But, you know, when we get those things, they're telling us that gold is you know, likely to move much, much higher. Now, the last one is the advanced decline line. So this, of course, deals with the gold stocks. And, you know, we're looking at the advanced decline line in GDX. And in this chart, we have GDX, uh, G the advanced decline line. There's the thick black one at the top. That's a cumulative reading. Then below that, we have GDX. And then in the bottom half, we have a 15-day and a 25-day rate of change for the advanced decline line. So that's uh, another way to look at it. And so measuring the rate of change rather than the cumulative, I mean, the cumulative is important because you can spot divergences there. And in fact, the advanced decline line was showing a negative divergence recently. So that was a bit of a worry, but you know now we're seeing the market um, it, that's not panning out. Uh, but nevertheless, this is still a really good indicator. And, you know, back back to the main point here. I'm sorry to get off track. But if you look at the bottom half, that's a way to measure breadth thrusts, uh, the rate of change. And so I'm just looking at the 15 days and 25 day periods. You know, I guess you could use five or seven or 10 days. But to me, that's too short. Short. I mean, I was evaluating the data historically. And so these are the two best periods I wanted to look at. And so a breadth thrust is when you get a very strong sudden surge in participation. So in other words, after a market bottom, a breadth thrust would be you have 90% or 95% of the stocks are going up aggressively. And it happens, you know, for a couple weeks, basically, where they're all moving in unison. And so that tells you that kind of action signifies that. Uh, there's big money coming into the market and, and there's consistent buying. And so we can just historically, when that happens, it's a sign of a, uh, you know, the market emerging from a major bottom and that there's going to be, you know, higher prices to come. And so based on this indicator, you can see, you know, looking at the 15 day, 25 day rate of change, you know, there was a breadth thrust in early 2016. And then there was also one, uh, in the middle of 2019. So these breadth thrusts came, they occurred, you know, roughly a month or so after the bottom. And you can see, you know, after the bottom, if you look at GDX, I mean, we'd have to zoom in, but you can, you can see they really got going. You know, when they really started to move, you had confirmation of a breadth thrust. So um, obviously the goal is we want to buy before the breadth thrust, but this is a important indicator because it's going to offer confirmation and that confirmation will signal that even though when it happens gdx will have probably moved a lot already it's going to signal that there's a lot more to come and you know we weren't getting that signal uh, if you look at the rallies over the last 18 months you know we weren't getting signals of breadth thrust but you know now perhaps and and look you know maybe Maybe GDX and the gold stuff, maybe they consolidate for a month or two and then they shoot higher and then you get the breadth thrust. It doesn't necessarily have to happen immediately. But this is the third indicator. It's just something to watch for. So hope you like the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, if you're new, subscribe to the channel. Go to my website, thedailygold.com. Get my free report there. Consider subscribing to my newsletter. Really looking forward to uh, what's in store for precious metals this year. It's been a tough consolidation and correction, but we're coming to the end of it or perhaps the very end of it. And uh, it looks like the prognosis is looking much better for all of us gold bugs and gold bulls. Thank you so much, and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon.